Okay, so we did this. Okay, now there's just another terminology, really, it's not new notation, it's just terminology. Sometimes you talk about whether an entity has obligatory participation or non obligatory participation. Right, in other words, take a look at this diagram. It's the same diagram we looked at earlier. Right, we are saying a customer. The lower limit for customer is zero in this relationship. That's what we've indicated with the dash line. In other words, we are saying that I may have an instance of customer, right? A specific customer, customer, you know, uh, John Smith. Right. So I've got a customer who's John Smith, but this John Smith customer has not yet placed a sales order at all. Right? That is that allowed in this diagram? Can I have a John Smith customer who has not placed a sales order at all? Yeah. That's allowed because lower limit is zero. Right? In other words, what we are saying, just <laughs> stating the same thing in a different way, is saying customer has non-obligatory participation in the relationship. Non-obligatory in the sense customer is not every customer is not obliged to participate in the relationship. I may have a customer who is just not yet participating in the relationship. Although, yeah, oh, okay, so bless you, I thought I, I heard it as question, okay. So although there is in general a relationship between customers and sales orders, there could be customers who are not obliged to participate in the relationship. You know, they're not participating as yet, maybe in the future they would participate, maybe they would never participate, we don't know, but it's allowed in the system, okay. So when you see a dashed line by the side of an entity, we can also say that that entity has non-obligatory participation in the relationship. So that sort of is the logic for putting the lower limit by the side of the entity itself, right? Because the lower limit determines whether that entity type is must participate or may not participate, right? And so that is why the dashed line putting it on the side of that entity indicates non-obligatory participation. It's not new notation, it's just terminology, right? So whether a sales order has what kind of participation? Obligatory, non-obligatory? It's obligatory. Because every single sales order must have a customer, right? So every sales order is obliged to participate in the relationship, solid line, okay? So that's just another uh, interpretation or another way of talking about the lower limit, okay? Now let's do some examples just to make sure that we understand the notation thoroughly, right? So we are saying here we've got relationships between books and authors. Right, so we are saying here, each book might be authored by one or many authors and each author must be the author of at least one book. Okay, so let's try to draw this. Okay. So what are the entity types? Author, book, okay, and then we said each book might be authored by one or many authors. So what do we say that? What is the lower limit? One, right? One or many authors, right? Now we are talking about the relationships of which, which entity? Book. Because the sentence says each book might be authored by one or many authors, right? So we are now talking about the entity book. So the lower limit is one. So what do I do? Solid line where? Near the book, right? So we put a solid line near the book. Okay. And then it says a book may have many authors. So what do we do? Grow foot on author. And then we are now, now we are going to talk about the author stuff. It says an author must be the author of at least one book. And of course, implicitly, an author may be the author of many books. That's not stated, but that's implicit. Okay. So at least one book. So what do we do? Solid line near author. That's the only place available now. Right. And an author may be the author of many books. Crowfoot here. 
this is just how it pans out for this particular diagram. And what kind of a relationship is this? It's a many to many relationship. Both sides is many. Right? So it's a many to many relationship. Straightforward. Uh, by the way, I'll be putting up this recording, so you know, you'll have this stuff available, except that you'll have to prod through a recording to get it. Okay, so each faculty member is assigned to exactly one office space, and each office space is either vacant or assigned to at most one faculty member. Okay, so what are the entities here? Faculty member and office space, I'm just going to call it office. Right, and it says what? It says every faculty member is assigned exactly one office. That means lower limit is one, upper limit is one. So what do I do? Lower limit is one indicates that I should put solid line on faculty. Okay, because that's the lower limit on faculty. Upper limit is one. What do I do? Nothing for now, right? Because otherwise we would have put a crow foot if the upper limit was many. Upper limit is one, so there's nothing to be done. And then it says each office space may be empty or assigned to one faculty member. So lower limit is zero, zero so dashed. Upper limit is one, so nothing. We don't do anything. Okay? So that's what this is. So this is an example of a what kind of relationship? It's a one to one relationship. Okay? Now, uh, many to many we'll talk about. Okay? I, there's some discussion to be had with many to many. In this case, right? In this case, uh, in the case of one to one relationship, remember, in the case of one to many relationship, we said we'll, what, what, what attribute do we put where? Of primary key of the entity on the one side, we'll put it on the many side, right? Now, in the case of a one-to-one -one relationship, you have an option. You can put the primary key of anyone on the other side, right? That is, you can indicate that a particular faculty member has a particular office by putting the office ID in faculty, or you can indicate that a particular faculty member is occupying an office by putting the faculty's ID in office. You have an option in this case. Okay, but you know the fact that it's there, you have to somehow indicate it. But in reality, you will not come across one-to-one -one relationships that often, right? In fact, none of the diagrams in the book have a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, it's either one-to-many or many-to-many. -many. That's what we'll see. So this point will not arise, but I just wanted to point it out anyway. Okay, the third one: each student may be registered for one or more courses, and each student has zero or more. Each course has zero or more students registered in it. Okay, so now we want to talk about courses and students. So course, student, right, and then it says, first we are talking about students. Lower limit is one, upper limit is many. So what? Lower limit is one, so? Solid line on student, because we are talking about students' cardinalities. Upper limit is many, so crowfoot. Right? Then we talk about course. It says each course has zero or more students registered in it. Dashed line and crowfoot. Many. Okay, so another many to many relationship. Okay, so we saw lots of one to many relationships when we spoke, when we introduced ER diagrams. So now here we have seen the other two possibilities, one to one and many to many. Okay, so that's straightforward, we understand this now. Okay, so this is just uh, the answers to all of these questions. Book and author, faculty member and office space, student and course. Okay. So now let's look at uh, the other way, right? We, we gave the business rule and said draw the diagram. 
Now we are looking at a diagram and saying let's find the business rules. Okay. Why do I say there are four business rules? Upper lower for each of the entities. Right? Upper limit, lower limit for course. Upper limit, lower limit for section. Right? So in this diagram, what is the lower limit for course? Zero. Right? That's one business rule. Upper limit for course? Many. Now when I say lower limit for course is zero, what does that translate into in terms of uh, a sentence about the domain? A course can have zero sections. That's what lower limit of zero means. And of course, the upper limit of many means course can have many sections. That's the other business rule. And looking at it from the section side, lower limit is one, which means a section must be of some course. You can't just say, well, I'm just having a section. What course is it? I don't know. That's not allowed. Right? Section says it's a section of this particular course. That's what this is. And of course, a section must be of only one course. So that's, that's really what it is. I think by now we get it, so I'll skip the next two examples here. Okay, this is a many-to-many -many relationship between movies and actors. Right, and which entity has obligatory participation? Actor. Solid line on the side of actor. So it says, in order to be considered an actor, you, you, know, you must have acted in at least one movie. Otherwise, you're not an actor. As per this domain, you know, whatever the rules are for this domain. But it says I can have a movie without any actors in it. Now, why? How is that possible? It could be a documentary, animation, or you could just say, well, at this stage in my database, I have created the movie. I have not yet allocated any actors. Later on, the actors may come. Okay. So that's that is also the other interpretation, which is it simply is allowing you to create a movie without specifying any actors thus far. Because you're talking about what is allowed in the database at any point in time. At some point, you may look at the database and see a movie with no actors in it. Fine. Okay. Whereas it says, I can never look at the database ever and see that there's an actor with no movie for that actor. That is never allowed. That's that is the business rule. Okay. So department and employee. And here's the relationship, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. We are saying every department must have an employee who is the manager of that department. Right? And every employee may be the manager of some department. Okay? Now, why is this a non-obligatory relation, uh, a dash line here near employee? Huh? Why is that a solid line and why is this a dash line? Zero, and in terms of practical terms, what does that mean? Okay, suppose I had this as a solid line. What would that mean? That means every employee has to be a manager? That's not possible. Right? Every employee cannot be a manager. There are going to be some employees who are not managers. That's what this is saying. Which one? Uh, like on the previous, all the previous examples. Yeah. Like, because you have a, a solid line on section, it means the section has to be a one course. Right. But on the other one, it's solid. Yeah. It's not a solid line because I have a thousand employees. In some organization, I have a thousand employees. Right? Mm -hmm. Only 20 of these are managers. The remaining, uh, you know, 980 are not managers. My question is, how come it doesn't say anything about department like the other one says? Well, manager of a department. When I say manager, I'm saying manager of a department. So it is saying something about the other side. It's a relationship, right? So there are 20 employees who are managers of some department, and the remaining 980 employees are not managers of any department. Right? So you cannot really put a solid line here. You're saying every employee has to be a manager in that case. Right. When I say a manager, manager of a department, it's not just. Uh, I see. But of course, every department we are saying must have a manager. Right? Every department must have a manager. Here we are only talking about the manager relationship. We are not talking about the relationship that a particular employee belongs to a department. 
That, we are not talking about that relationship. Okay, we are only talking about the manager relationship. For employee. Yeah. No, when you say lower limit is zero, you're talking about employee instances. Right, the employee is playing the role of manager, right? So the lower limit of zero, what it's telling you is, I can go and look at all the thousand employees I have. Okay? Some of them will be managers, but there may be some who are not managers. That is what it says. The lower limit, that means I may have some employees who are not participating in this relationship of being a manager. Right? But every department will participate in the relationship in the sense that every department will have some employee as its manager. Okay? So that's what managers on the line. Right, managers on the line because it's a relationship. Okay, it's a relationship. That's why it's on the line. Okay, this is, this is important. Right, now here we are talking about the relationship that is employees being managers of departments. Is there any other relationship between employees and departments? Which is? Employees working for a particular department. That's another relationship altogether. Right, how do we represent that? Draw another line. Right? So nothing says the two entities have to be related in only one way. There may be many relationships between two entities and you'll draw one line for each relationship that exists. So therefore, let me try this. Oops. Okay, so here... Okay, what I'm trying to do here, which I'm not able to do with the projector, with the recording on, is I'm trying to draw yet another line between department and manager. So, it'll be, it will look like this. Finally, I would have department, and then I have employee, right, and then the line was solid here, the line was dashed here. Each department has uh, one employee, whom, who has to be the manager of the department and each employee may or may not be manager of a department. Now there's yet another relationship which is, I'll draw it like this. Okay, Each department has one or more employees working for it. Right? That's the, the crow foot here. Saying every department may have many employees working for it. But every employee can work for only one department. And then we made both of the lines solid, so we are saying both have to participate. Okay? Any, any questions on this one? So there are two different relationships, which means there will be two different lines. Okay? So in this example, in the case of department and employee, uh, how will you represent the fact that a particular employee works for a particular department? Yep. Put the department ID into the employee table, employee uh, entity. But of course it will be implicit. right? And you might do the same thing for representing who is the manager of a department. What would you like to do? How would you represent who is the manager of a department? Primary key of which where? You can put either or, but it would make sense to put the employee's ID inside department. Right? Because most employees are not managers. Right? So the, if you put it here, then for every employee you will have the department ID field, but most of those fields will be empty. Because most of the employees are not managers. If you put it there, the field will be doing full duty. But it doesn't matter, you can put it either way. Okay, so we spoke about this part now. Now, so far, we've been talking about only one kind of relationship, right? Which is binary relationships. That means every relationship we've looked at so far has had two entities 
connected by a relationship. Okay. Now that's a nice way to start discussing entity relationship diagram, but that conceptually that's not always the case. Right? You could have relationships that are formed by a different number of entities than two. Okay, now I don't want to give the game away, so I pose this problem here. I say a manager has one or many employees reporting to her or him. Right? So you've got a manager who's got many, many subordinates, and every employee has only one subordinate. But of course, you may have some employees who have, uh, sorry, every employee has only one manager, but you may have some employees who have no managers. The head honcho sitting on top of the organization structure has, has no manager, but every other employee has one manager. Typically, we say one boss per employee, right? So that's what we want to indicate here. Okay, you got the picture? You've got a manager has many subordinates. The subordinate has at most one manager. Let's try to draw this. Okay, now I need your participation in getting this done. So tell me, what should I draw? You want manager and? Okay. Okay. Uh, a manager may have many employees reporting to him or her, and a manager must have at least one employee, otherwise what is he or she managing? And an employee must have a manager, put that here. Right? One and, uh, this says an employee must have one and only one manager, but we are saying there might be at least one employee who doesn't have a manager, so this really would have to be a dashed line, not a solid line, if you want to account for that one, uh, the chief executive who doesn't report to any manager. Right. So it, probably this would be a dashed line, not a solid line. Okay? Everyone agree with this? Now here we are saying an employee may have a manager, may not have a manager. Right? So it is employee who might not participate in the relationship. But I'm saying every manager must have at least one subordinate. So the dashed line is on the employee side because we are talking about obligatory, non-obligatory with respect to employee. Right? We are talking lower limit for employee. Okay? This is wrong. This diagram is wrong. Oh, you have a question? No. Okay. This diagram is wrong. Okay. So you came up with this, but it's incorrect. Why? Why is this incorrect? This is incorrect because if you take an organization structure like this, you take an organization structure in which there is a chief executive who has no boss, and then there are two VPs of the many that uh, may exist, and they have some subordinates. Right? Now, these three guys are managers, and these guys are guys, are managers in this diagram, right? But they're also employees, they're also subordinates. Right? So what this diagram on top is doing, it's sort of separating out managers and subordinates. Right? It's thinking that instances of one are not instances of the other. But the reality is that every manager, almost every manager is also a subordinate. Right? Take the VP of finance. The VP of finance is a subordinate of the CEO, but is the manager of the treasurer in this example. Right? So the separation of the instances into manager and subordinate, that's very artificial. Into manager and employee, that's an artificial separation. Because every instance that we are talking about here is an instance of employee. Okay? So this manage, being a manager of somebody else is only a relationship. Right? It's a relationship between what and what? Being a manager is a relationship of an employee with another employee, right? Because some employee is the manager of another employee. The CEO is an employee who happens to be the manager of these two. 
other employees. And the VP finance is an employee who is the manager of the treasurer. Right? So here we are not talking about two entity types. We are talking about only one entity type. Right? So that real picture is this. There is only one entity type. And some instances of the entity type are related to some other instances of the entity type. Right? Now that is an example of a unary relationship. Okay? It is a relationship that involves only one entity type. Right? But of course, an occurrence of the relationship involves two entity instances. That is true. Right, because one employee is a manager of another employee. There are two instances involved, but both of these instances are actually of the same entity type. That's an example of a unary relationship. Now, I had a student last year who could not say unary. She would always say urinary relationship. That's not what we are talking about. It's a unary relationship involving only one entity. Okay, so that's uh, an, that's an example of an instance where you don't need two entity types to make a relationship. Okay. Uh, sometimes people call this recursive relationships, unary relationship, recursive relationship, same thing. Okay. Now, do you understand the the line now is bending on itself? It's you know going from the entity to itself, right? But on either side, I put the name to the relationship that indicates what role is being played. Right. Now, why is this whole line dashed? This is also consisting of two halves, actually. But why is the whole thing a dashed line? Exactly. That's a very correct way of putting it. Precisely. Right. So, the CEO is an employee who is not connected to any other employee in this manager relationship. And the people on the bottom don't have any subordinates. Right. So, these people don't have managers, those people don't have subordinates. Now, this person doesn't have a manager and these people don't have subordinates. So that is why both ends of the line are dashed. Okay. Now we'll come across several examples of unary relationships as we go through the, uh, you know, yeah. It's one table with a foreign key inside the same table. It's, you know, it's, it's called a foreign key terminologically, but it's not really foreign. That's a very good question too. She's saying if it's, you know, in the table sense, how would you represent it? Well, you'll have the employee table and then you'll have a manager ID. Right? So if a person has some manager, you'll just put the manager's ID within the employee, within that row itself. Right? So it's a foreign key. Uh, it's, you know, employee ID is added as yet another field in, the, in its own table. Okay? So that's how it would be represented. It's a really good question. Okay? So now that I have given you an example of a unary relationship, you have to give me one. Okay, let's do this. Let's take a five minute break. And during the break, you you know, you take a break and keep thinking. And after the break, give me an example. Okay, so five minutes, 11.15 we'll meet. Uh, and we'll start off by looking at an example of a unary relationship. Okay, so let's take a break.